that 0 0.005 changes my turret solution by a quarter minute click. Just 0 0.005 makes a difference. Reality is telescopes are off by as much as 2 to 3 percent of the actual value. And if you don't calibrate the telescope, you're liable to have a uh, scope that's actually giving you, say, point, let's get a little button here. Let's go to a, a realistic number. And instead of giving me 0.25, it gives me 0.24 minutes to a click wouldn't be surprising. It's probably actually giving me quarter inches as opposed to quarter minutes. Okay. Now the solution is considerably different, isn't it? All for point Oh, 01 minutes difference between what the knob actually delivers as opposed to what the solution calls for. We need 17.5 minutes on the gun. The problem is if we dial 17.5 minutes, we don't get it. We really need to dial one full turn, 15 minutes on the knob, plus three more minutes. We need to dial what looks like 18 and a quarter on the telescope to get to where we need to be. This is what one of those things, anyway, that so often annoys people about plugging the numbers into a ballistic calculator and they go out and shoot and go, oh, well, this calculator's screwed up, but it doesn't match where my where my bullet is landing, and then they start going in and tweaking either the BC or the velocity or sight height or this, that, or the other thing to get the right answer at that one distance, when the real problem is they didn't dial up the actual solution. They dialed up something different. So calibrating the telescope and entering those correct values there is a critical part of calibrating the system. We'll go back and load our primary uh, turret. So you can see here, <clears throat> my primary turret, this is, this is the actual turret configuration that I have in my gun. Uh, even that 0 .003 value changes me by a click. And it gets worse and worse as we go out. If I change this target to be at, say, 1,500 yards, you see now the difference between the calculated solution of 13.6 mil and the actual value that I have to put on the telescope, which is 13.2. If you don't think 0.4 mil at 1,500 yards is the difference between a hit and a miss, You'll need to grab your calculator and figure out what 0.4 mil actually covers at 1,500 yards, because uh, pretty much I'm over his head if I dial 13.6. I'm going to be in trouble. All right, the next important profile to deal with is what we call the bullet, or the cartridge profile. So if we go to bullet, build edit. We'll bring up the cartridge that I'm using right now, which is a 338 diameter, and you can put the diameter in in either inches or millimeters. The bullet weight in grains or grams, 285 grain Hornady is what I'm shooting right now. The physical length of the bullet <coughs> uh, computes a more accurate spin drift value. If you don't know, just leave it at zero. If you have calipers, physically measure the bullet, and it will refine the spin drift calculation for you. Uh, Corey? You need to enter an average muzzle velocity. 
This is another Corey? sore point for most people when they go to calibrate the system. The reality is that virtually all of the consumer grade chronographs that you can buy have what I would call a, uh, a limited accuracy window. Most of them will you know, specify that they are within 1% of the actual value. In case you're not hearing me, there's a question. <clears throat> um, question. Back on the turret profile, can it be measured at, say, 25 yards, or does it need to be 100? Well, you can certainly measure it at 25 yards. The problem is you're starting to go to extremely fine values when you measure. Uh, my preferred methodology for dealing with the turret is to use a boresight laser or similar laser, set the gun up, <clears throat> pointing in at the tiniest aiming mark I can use with that crosshair, turn the laser on, <clears throat> mark the point of the laser at exactly 100 yards. And when I say exactly, don't use your laser rangefinder. Take a steel tape measure and measure exactly 100 yards. Okay. Mark that point. Dial up as much elevation as you can manage. You'll want to have a six or eight foot high target. Dial up as much elevation as the scope will give you to an even number. Re-aim at exactly the same point. Okay. Go down and mark the spot that the laser is showing. Measure the distance between those two points. And then I'll show you the calculator here in a minute when we go to the tools window. And that will calculate for you what the actual turret click values are very, very precisely. If you were to do it at 25 yards, you'd be in trouble. Um, and the question is, 100 yards from the muzzle or the center of the optic? Uh, 100 yards from the turret. Okay? The turret is where the actual movement is, is going in. So it's 100 yards from the center of the telescope's turret mechanism. The closer you are to being extremely precise here, the better off you are. I don't even like to shoot groups when I do it because then you're looking at the center of a group and even if I shot five or eight shots, um, how do I really know that the center of that group is at the center of the aiming point? How precisely did I zero, for example? Right? What I'm trying to do is calibrate the optic, not so much the gun. All right, with that question answered, <clears throat> um, you also need to input the BC clearly, um, 0.73. These are G1 BCs. We don't really need to use G7s with this program because deceleration constant takes care of it. Um, <clears throat> when you get the muzzle velocity, as I was saying with the chronographs and the plus or minus 1% uh, problem, A, you need to shoot enough over the chronograph. Right. Five or ten rounds does not an average muzzle velocity make. Um, I do my absolute best to shoot over the chronograph whenever it is physically possible. Whenever I'm out doing zeroing sessions or range test sessions, I try and set up the chronograph and shoot through it. Okay. So when I'm going out and doing my calibrations of this system, I will set the chronograph up while I'm shooting at the 1500 meter target and try and shoot all of those shots that I'm doing for calibration through the chrono just gets me more data. I would like to have a minimum of 20 rounds before I called it an average velocity. And then you're going to have to take that average with a grain of salt. When you put the velocity in and you shoot at a reasonable distance, three quarters or so of the max supersonic range. This is the first number you'll want to play with to make the computer match the elevation setting that you actually needed to use. If you go out with your 308 and shoot a target at a thousand yards away and the computer tell, told you to come up to 30 four minutes and you actually needed to come up to 36, 
the way you tune the system, start adjusting the muzzle velocity. Plus or minus 1% is not unusual at all. Right? And if that brings you into a match, after you've got the scope calibrated, of course, then you're probably in good shape. If the muzzle velocity and the telescope calibration don't get you there, then you might tweak the BC a, a percentage point or so, up or down, because the manufacturer's BCs are also not known for being wickedly precise. There's uh, always a certain amount of variation there just in, say, uh, aerodynamic jump, what angle uh, a nose up your bullet happens to fly. Um, so there's a certain variation there if you want to get that right. Then we have a final option and we'll show you the DK calculator here uh, when, we, uh, when we come back after our break. The rest of the notes here are just exactly that, they're notes. Right? Who, who's the manufacturer? What, uh, what are you loading in it? If you shoot enough over the chronograph and enough different temperatures, you can enter the powder temperature that you did this muzzle velocity at right, and the deviation in feet per second for each degree Fahrenheit. Now I happen to be loading Retumbo and as far as I am concerned with this particular load, my variation is for practical purposes zero. Um, M118LR is about one foot per second per degree Fahrenheit, for example. Right? If you enter that here when you have powder temperature turned on, it'll adjust it for you. Right? If we go back to the rifle profile now, yes, I know. Right? If we go back to the rifle profile now, what you get to do is attach these. You can go to the Browse button. You can pick the selected file, right? and it attaches. So right now, when I load this rifle profile, it automatically loads for me this 338 uh, hand load and this telescope. And that's how I end up with the screen you see right now with this rifle profile loaded, lower left-hand corner lower right hand corner has the bullet and when I do my calculations all I need to do is come to the presets page fill in the atmosphere information say accept and I'm up and running 